SPJIMR Center for Financial Innovation presents Ideas to Impact. Media partner, CNBC TV18. Hello and welcome to this special show. SPJIMR Center for Financial Innovation presents Ideas to Impact in association with CNBC TV18. I am Shruti Mishra. Innovation in entrepreneurship has emerged as a powerful catalyst for driving India's economic growth and transforming its business landscape. With a growing number of visionary entrepreneurs, startups and established enterprises embracing innovation. India is experiencing a remarkable shift towards fostering creativity, problem solving and forward thinking solutions. As the country positions itself as a global innovation hub, the convergence of technological advancements and entrepreneurial spirit is fueling a wave of transformative ventures that are shaping the future of various sectors, including education. The infusion of innovation in education is paving the way for revolutionary learning methods, personalized approaches and cutting-edge technologies that are reshaping how knowledge is imparted and acquired. SPJIMR is one such institution that is leading the way. Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan's SPJN Institute of Management and Research offers programs and immersive experiences that foster critical thinking, systems thinking and a wisdom mindset, enabling participants to become responsible innovators who can drive positive change in their organizations and communities. Also, the Center for Financial Innovation at SPJIMR is a research and education hub that focuses on innovation in the financial industry. CFI's mission is to create an ecosystem that promotes innovation, collaboration and thought leadership in finance. To know more, I'm now joined by three esteemed guests, Dr. Varun Nagraj, uh, Dean SPJIMR, Manoj Mohan, Executive Director, SPJIMR Center for Financial Innovation, and Sunil Bhatia, the investor and former CEO of Infogain. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us here today. You know, we are the world's third largest startup ecosystem. In fact, a recent report uh, by GEM India ranks India as the fourth place when it comes to entrepreneurship in terms of quality. So we've come a long way, but there are gaps. And, you know, Dr. Nagraj, let me start with you. If you can tell us what those gaps are essentially and how educational institutions can kind of empower the startup ecosystem even further. Entrepreneurship in India, I think, is much more tightly coupled with a potential public-private partnership model mm. than in other parts of the world. So entrepreneurship in India, I think, is different in that context, mm. you know, in terms of being perhaps more closely aligned with the digital infrastructure that's being laid for us. Okay. Now, with that in mind, if you look at what kind of an entrepreneurial ecosystem do we need in order to support this type of a, a entrepreneurship model, I'd sort of say the focus really has to be in the seed stage of entrepreneurship. Yeah. I think we have done a phenomenally good job in the early stage, growth stage, and late stage. The seed stage is still very much the, what you might call the wild west to the equivalent here. Yeah. And I think here's where educational institutions like SPJMR can come in to make the seed stage experience better. Mm. So I think there are a few sort of distinct parts to the seed stage, and I'll describe to you how an educational institution can contribute to each. There is the wide end of the funnel where you have potentially millions of potential entrepreneurs who are trying to figure out whether entrepreneurship is even right for them, what it means for them, is that a life for them? And if they do have a spark or a glimmer, mm. what is it educational institutions can do you know, in terms of lighting that spark yeah. appropriately? Once that spark is lit, India has now nearly 350 incubators of varying qualities. But within these incubators, I believe, again, educational institutions have a role to play in partnering with these incubators to provide the right kind of educational content to the residents of these incubators, because it's not fair for us to expect the incubators to provide that educational experience themselves. Mm. And then as you move from the incubators into things that are more specialized, aligned with the digital infrastructure, you need accelerators. And I think this is one where I think leading educational institutions like SPJMR have a claim to actually build accelerators that are quite vertically focused and aligned. So I think these are the ways in which an educational institution, besides its mission of teaching students, teaching creative thinking, teaching innovation and so forth, besides the regular day job of being okay. an educational institution, I think we can do this. All right, Sunil Bhatia, let me now come to you. Uh, let's talk about the Sunil Bhatia Startup Hub. What motivated you to launch the hub? And tell us, how does it support uh, aspirational entrepreneurs and what is the kind of impact you're hoping to create? I was very passionate about being an entrepreneur in 2003, 2004, mm. but I frankly did not know how to proceed. Absolutely, there was nothing. Right? There was, there was no nothing VC, here. No right? angels there. And you know, and, and the 
And there were so many ideas. Like I said, I'll put up 10,000 ATMs in India, but it was way ahead of time. I yeah. thought I'll put up a payment gateway in 2002, but it was you know, very, very early. So the whole motivation behind putting a startup hub is, you know, and I struggled for like five, six years before I came to say, okay, this is what I want to do. Mm. I'm hoping that the startup hub and, you know, with the collaboration with, with the SPGN, it'll give the future Sunil Bhatias or, or young entrepreneurs a whole platform to A, accelerate their vision, B, get to know that, look, there are many, many other small things that you need to get right, you know, which, which founding team you need to get to, how mm. do you raise money, you know, what is your idea, how do you take your idea to the next stage. I'm hoping all of that, you know, this, this, so that is really the personal experience and that's the motivation behind this. All right, Dr. Nagraj, coming back to you, tell us what kind of support does SPJIMR basically offer its students and alums to kind of, uh, you know, transform their innovative ideas and startups and ventures? What is the kind of support that you're providing them? Let me tell you what we're doing, you know, for our students and, and, for the, uh, and for entrepreneurs. So the first part is when somebody is a student, can we basically cultivate the entrepreneurial mindset? Yeah. In them? Yeah. So what are the pieces of entrepreneurial mindset and what are things that an educational institution can do besides there are things, you know, that, that we really can't do. Either somebody is a risk taker or they're not. Yeah. Right. That's not something one can teach, but one can teach and incul inculcate the ability to innovate. So that's certainly one thing we can do. A second thing we can do is basically have the ability to operate in a very uncertain, vague, fluid environment. Mm. Now, these are two things that a good educational institution through its coursework during its MBA program should be able to impart to its students. And that's what we aim to do. Yeah. So if you look at our particular curriculum, you will find a lot of courses which are pretty unstructured. And they're unstructured for a reason, because you want students to be problem framers, not just problem solvers of CAT exams, right? So you want people to figure out, well, what is the problem that's yeah. worth solving? So these are sort of the educational opportunities that we provide to our students. We throw them into all kinds of unstructured situations, including random social internships that mm. they, you know, mm. to random places they may not have been to but it's important for them to understand. So these are the kinds of things we do for our students. We also have an amazing program for our, what I would call our third and fourth year students. So students after they finish two years of their MBA at SPJMR can choose to forego placements okay. you know, going forward. Right? This okay. is a new program we're launching. And in years three and year four, they stay with us as residential entrepreneurs and residents. Oh. We basically fund a living wage for them. We take care of their tuition, I mean, their uh, loan repayments for the first yeah. year. So for two years, they're with us, part of our community as they continue to work on their idea. And we hope that at the end of two years, they start moving up, you know, using the startup hub and others into the incubation. And phase. how soon? Have you already rolled no, out? We're just rolling it out for the incoming class now. Okay. And I'm hoping that out of the 360 students that we welcomed, mm. at least 1% of them, Absolutely. four, five of them, yeah. will choose to take this particular path. But that's a commitment that we have made. We call it the Emerging Entrepreneur in Residence program, you know, that we're launching. And that'll be in year three and year four. Hmm. So to me, that's a pretty um, cool idea. I think we will also open that up to our alumni because as Sunil said, a lot of people get the entrepreneurial bug, not when they're just coming out of yeah, MBA, absolutely. but later on, later five on. years. Yeah. So why not basically open it up to them as well? Okay. And we're creating a very nice connect between aspiring entrepreneurs who are alumni and our students. So these are all the ways in which we're definitely focusing on our own, the students okay. and the alumni, but I do want to emphasize our mission is actually broader and community-based. Let's, uh, you know, throw some light on the Finnovate Accelerator. How is it different from the other FinTech accelerators that we already have today? And uh, what unique opportunities does it provide? Uh, not taking equity is clearly the big one, right? Yeah, so Finnovate is different mostly because of the focus it provides towards quality. Mm. So. I guess at the end of the day, an accelerator is not a hard asset. It's a group of people coming together to make a difference. But the quality of an accelerator is in the quality of the people. So we have gone extra mile to ensure that every step of the process is high quality. Every step creates an impact for every stakeholder involved. So let me just take three of the key building blocks. Yeah. So let's start with the mentors. So normally people build a mentor pool. So We've looked at these models and we felt, you know, let's let's put some science behind it. For a startup, what are the kind of mentors a founder? It's a very founder-centric program, right? So we've got leadership mentors who are effectively people who has been in a CXO profile. Mm. We've got entrepreneurship or a founder mentors who are built with a pool of 10, 12 mentors who've done the journey once, twice, sometimes thrice, mm. or they've been investors for the last 15 years. And then we've got a third pool of mentors who are functional experts, who are deep subject matter experts, who've done a particular, let's say fintechs, if I were to mm. take an example, is needs a heavy uh, knowledge of compliance and regulations. Yeah. Any startup looking to innovate has Absolutely. to that keep is, regulation in yeah, mind, yeah. right? So we've got 
experts from that domain. So mentorship is very loosely used, but we've put a lot of thought to ensure that let's get the strategy, let's get operations, let's get funding, let's get compliance, all mm. sorted of. Mm. That's one building block. Second, every startup, and you know, it's, things are getting difficult to raise funding now, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's no longer a thing where you throw a yeah, business yeah. plan and you get a million dollar funding anymore. In this time, one of the best thing you can do is get sales. Mm. Push off the funding conversation, even if it's by six months. Yeah. So that's where our partnership with all our banks and insurance firms come into the okay. play. The mandate with these people are very simple. You need to look at the startups that we bring to you, which we are curating anyway. We are ensuring that when the startups come to the corporates, they are already polished and in the right level, right conversation. Look at them as a vendor. Look at them to give business to them or even look at a strategic investment in them. Mm. So the first, you know, after we got the mentors, the first building block before, you know, even taking the startups in was to get these corporates. And the third is, like I said, Mumbai Angels are a startup partner. We are building an entire ecosystem of investors of all levels, right? From seed funding, for example, uh, Sunil is here. Sunil's uh, part of the commitment goes to create an innovation fund, which will kickstart mm. at some point in mm. next year, which will give grants, micro interest-free loans. And from there, we build all the way to uh, two of our startups are looking at fundraise between 3.5 to $5 million. Okay. That's no longer a seed funding anymore. So I was about to, to ask you, what's the selection criteria? How are you choosing those startups? Accelerator startups, Finnovate Accelerator, require three, four things. It's mm. a vertical focused on finance. So we're effectively looking at startups in the fintech, tech fin, or deep tech space, number one. Number two, their product should already be there. They have to have an MVP. Yeah. And three, they should ideally have some early traction, some revenue. doesn't matter if it's 50 lakhs, one crore, two crore. Somebody should be willing to pay for the solution that they have yeah. created. You know, Manoj, apart from the Finnovate Accelerator, if you could talk about how CFI basically partners, uh, you know, in uh, with the industry and drives kind of innovation and creates a sort of a bridge between, you know, academia and the corporate world, if you can throw some light on that as well. Our mission is innovation. Hmm. The central part is financial innovation. We are fundamentally an academic institution. We are focused on building cross-functionality, leveraging the strengths. So from a center's perspective, we have three, three key levers, if I may look at. Innovation, education, and information. Mm. So today, if you look at any stakeholder in the financial innovation ecosystem, let's talk a banker, let's talk a corporate, let's talk a CFO, uh, a hedge fund, a startup. They fundamentally are looking for access to startup, which is where the whole accelerator comes up. Mm. They're looking for, and fintech is a very emerging area. Yeah. Education needs to be done. So we've got our latest nine-month program. Which, in, which we believe is the best-in-class program, which is focusing on fintech, AIML, data science, uh, comprehensively. And people who come into a program get an opportunity to work with the startup founders. Nowhere in the country you will find an opportunity where a startup founder and part of a program participant are working with each other. Uh, share some of the key initiatives and programs at SPJMR that foster a culture of innovation between students and the faculty. So as faculty members, I think our first responsibility as we are building the next generation of innovators, mm. you know, our students, is to make sure they're wise innovators. And so you will see the notion of driving or advancing wise innovation as a unique Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan SPJMR concept of mm. innovation. Mm. And this comes from SPJMR's 40-year legacy. It's not as long as Harvard's, but the 40-year yeah. legacy of SPJMR, inspired by BVB, is the fact that wisdom has to guide what it is that Absolutely. we do. Yeah. And so bringing wisdom and innovation together, I think is SPJMR's unique contribution to the Indian startup ecosystem. Mm. Mm. So on that, the faculty and the students work together. Our coursework is built around wise innovation. Okay. We have specific cases we run. We run an annual award that we will be starting called the Wise Innovator of the Year in corporate India. Okay. And I hope that you, know, you help us participate and showcase sure. who we think are India's most wise innovators. Mm -hmm. Because I think the concept of wise innovation is how faculty and students will come together around specific innovations. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to add to yeah, it? Yeah, 100%. I think one of the reasons for bringing the startup hub also within the SPGN is, see, for the, as an entrepreneur, you usually tend to focus on hard skills. What is my product? What's my market? What's my... Yeah. How do I raise funds? You know, those are the two, usually the top of the mind skill set that you go to. But as you get into the journey, you realize that soft skills are equally important. Mm. Right? And that's where I think the wholeness of and the breadth of the SPGN as an institute, which not only gives you soft skills from an organizational behavior and, you know, how do you interact with other, other yeah. members of the team, but also in terms of, you know, the SPGN has this whole spiritual wisdom. You know, you try and bring all of those skill set into the and I think you're, you're, as an entrepreneur, your journey becomes that much more richer. Absolutely. And as an alum, if you come and, and try and leverage all of that, you know, 
as they say in hindi no sone pe suhaga so. wonderful and on, on that sone pe suhaga note it's time for us to take a short break but don't go anywhere we'll be right back SBJIMR Center for Financial Innovation presents Ideas to Impact Media Partner CNBC TV18 If you are a startup founder if you are wanting to get serious money serious investors serious advice I don't think you can find a better program than Finovate in this country hands down With clarity, connect, and conviction, take your startup to the next level through the Finovate program. SBJIMR Center for Financial Innovation presents Ideas to Impact. Media partner CNBC TV18. Welcome back. You are watching SBJIMR Center for Financial Innovation presents Ideas to Impact in association with CNBC TV18. We have with us Dr. Varun Nagraj, Dean SBJIMR, Manoj Mohan, the Executive Director SBJIMR Center for Financial Innovation, and Sunil Bhatia, the investor and former CEO of Infogain. Uh, Dr. Nagraj, let me again start with you. You know, if you could share some examples of uh, successful alumni-led startups from the SPJIMR ecosystem who've kind of, you know, with their experiences, with their journeys, have influenced the entrepreneurial culture here. Much as we like to uh, lionize entrepreneurs, we also should lionize those that make entrepreneurship possible. You know, we started off with the fact that we have these wonderful technocrats that are laying out a digital infrastructure for India for the entrepreneurs to build on. Mm. One of our own is actually one of these technocrats that is building this digital infrastructure. We have an alumnus named Sujit Nair, yeah. who essentially is part of building out what's called the Beckon Protocol, which is becoming ONDC, right? Yeah. ONDC after Aadhaar and UPI it's the next is the thing. next thing that is basically going to make e-commerce really boom. So, you know, kudos to him first. He's not an entrepreneur himself, but without him, there wouldn't be a thousand entrepreneurs that existed Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yeah. Then if I look at the other entrepreneurs who are doing well that we're proud of, and there are mm. many of them, mm. there's a logistics uh, company called Bolt that is doing amazingly well, and they should be getting welcomed into the Unicorn Club you know, pretty shortly. Not that unicorns are the only way to measure success. Absolutely. That's a way to measure yeah, success. Yeah. But we're proud to see the progress that Bolt is making and becoming a key part of logistics, which is yet mm. another mm. piece of infrastructure that is needed in order to get to that $10 trillion economy. Mm. And then for a little bit of fun, and you know, because you know, life can't be entirely about building infrastructure, yeah. we have a wonderful startup for those that like fish called Captain Fresh. Right? And this basically makes sure that the right kinds of fresh seafood mm. Mm. is available to those that want seafood yeah. somewhere. And then, of course, there's Sunil, who I think inspires a whole generation of entrepreneurs. You know, going forward, uh, Manoj, this question is uh, for you. What are your aspirations regarding its impact, you know, on the financial industry and its role in shaping uh, sort of the future innovation in the sector? What do you think uh, CFI's role is going to be? What is your aspiration? Our aspiration is very simple. For all the stakeholders I've mentioned, we want to be their one-stop partner when it mm -hmm. comes to innovation, education, information. Okay. And that's how we are building the entire business. Anything related to the thought leadership position in financial innovation, we would at least like to be the top three players in the country. Mm. Okay, uh, that's the goal we are working towards. So whether it's the ability to bring together 100, 200 high quality startups through the startup hub and the accelerator, be it the ability to high quality articles when it comes to information or high quality programs in the workplace. Speaking of aspirations, what's your aspiration uh, regarding the uh, Sunil Bhatia startup? Have any growth targets that you've set for yourself? And uh, also, you know, you're a veteran. Any advice, your biggest learning that you would like to give to young entrepreneurs? My biggest learning, I would say, is for, for an entrepreneur would be, you know, 
and it's going to sound a little cliche, but know yourself. Yeah. Frankly, because that journey is so lonely and so, you know, it is filled with so many yes. dark spots. So once you know yourself, you know, as Sansu say, you can win thousand battles. Once you really know yourself, I would say, spend a little more time doing internal reflection as opposed to, because we, otherwise you're only focused on the external side of the issues. Yeah. I would urge you to look at a little bit in, you know, internal as well as you as you develop the business. Okay. And and your aspiration or your growth targets for startup, how, where do you vision that? One of the metrics in Y Combinator in the US is that anybody who joins that is a 60% probability that you'll make $10 million mm. in about six, seven years of time. Mm. I'm, I'm hoping the kind of quality of startups that will come out of here, they will be that successful that if you're associated with any capacity, yeah. you know, it will be a near home run for that. If you can get six out of 10, you're doing really, really well. You know, I was about to ask you your parting words, you know, to the kind of work SPJMR is doing, CFI is doing, uh, the whole collaboration that you have here, uh, the cohort, I think, ends in three months, uh, September, I think the startups graduate, your parting words. I think innovation is a long journey, mm. but I think you need to do it for the right reasons. And I think what we're trying to put together at SPJMR are both right and reasons, you know, to, in order to go innovate. And I think that's a very difficult balance to get right. But I think if you do get it right, yeah. I don't think there's anything better than that. All right. On that note, it's time for me to wrap up this conversation. Thank you, Dr. Varun Nagaraj, uh, Manoj Mohan, and of course, uh, Sunil Bhatia for joining us today and for those valuable insights on innovation and entrepreneurship. Thank you, viewers, for tuning in. And I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Many thanks for watching. SPJIMR Center for Financial Innovation presents Ideas to Impact. Media partner, CNBC TV 18.